Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Microsoft Surface Pro 11 for 2024. Now, a question I get often is whether or not the Surface Pro 11 is a good alternative to the iPad Pro, or of course the Samsung Tab S9 or Tab S9 Ultra, or even the Lenovo uh, Tab Extreme. And my answer is a resounding yes, because what Microsoft has accomplished here in the 11th generation of the Surface Pro line is really bridging the gap between solidifying the Surface Pro as a true tablet because now it can hang when it comes to battery life with its mobile OS counterparts while still offering capability and compatibility that the mobile OS system simply cannot deliver. It also has uh, AI that of course none of those products have to offer even if it's just a gimmick at this point that will change over time and in addition when it comes to recharging your Surface Pro 11 as opposed to your Android or Apple tablet this is going to fully recharge in literally one hour and yield over 10 hours of battery life if you're frugal who knows you might be able to get close to 15 I've seen over 12 hours and that is simply amazing all done with a 65 watt charger. It doesn't have to be the Microsoft Surface one. Uh, you can use a traditional 65 watt charger and that means it's also going to, you know, charge your device of choice, like if you're using an Android phone with Type-C charging or an Apple device with Type-C charging, you will only need one charger for everything. So there's no question the Surface Pro 11 has turned that corner and finally established itself as a true tablet. Now, some will chime in and say, but it's not optimized for touch input. I know where you're coming from. Uh, however, I would make the argument that I have no problem with touch input on this. Is it better on a device that is solely really created and centered around your hand being the point of input? Absolutely. But I don't run into issues uh, at least on a frequent basis, where I can't use my finger for regular content consumption and things of that nature. If you're talking about jumping into real software and doing work, why wouldn't you want a keyboard and mouse or trackpad? Or a pen, for that matter. So the other question becomes, well, now that we've established that it can also outperform its mobile OS counterport, uh, counterparts, forget that it has a much broader breadth of compatibility, Let's talk about pricing. So, 1500 US dollars for the half terabyte and Sapphire, uh, or half terabyte model that I have here in Sapphire. Remember, OLED display, uh, you won't find that on anything that Apple makes. Uh, of course, uh, Windows Hello, which for you Apple users is the uh, face unlock, you won't have on any computer, obviously, in Macs, uh, in Apple's lineup. And then, in addition to that, these cameras are best in quality, and you have the AI component. Uh, so there is a lot to like there, but it is a real computer at the end of the day. Unlike your iPad Pro or your Tab S9 Ultra that you've got to kind of convince yourself that is useful enough, even if it's just an enlarged version of your phone of choice, which for me, you know, considering I've got the Fold, there's even less of a reason to talk about tablets for me. But I think you're starting to see the picture that now you have a device that really can replace, I would argue, your mobile OS tablet and your productivity machine. This isn't going to be for gaming or heavy lifting. And by heavy lifting, I mean power users. You're not going to do 4K video editing on this, things of that nature. But, you know, if you're trying to just, again, do regular office work, content consumption, this is going to do all of it. And then when your office, your real work life requires a certain piece of software uh, that you cannot get to work on a mobile platform, here, it's most likely going to work. And I say most likely because, yes, uh, Microsoft's Prism emulation uh, translation platform still is not perfect, but it's damn close. And while certain pieces of software still aren't going to run, like, you know, I'll, I'll reach on this uh, Autodesk uh, suite software like Revit and AutoCAD, Adobe's Premiere Pro, which is coming, that's what we do know, um, and native stuff will eventually come as well, which should run incredibly well on uh, the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite powering this. That isn't something you can say about, again, mobile OS-based device. And I know a lot of people will chime in and say, well, with my workflow, I have this app and this app. And yeah, but when it's your office and they tell you that you have to use a certain piece of software and you can't, but then with this machine, you would be able to, 
why would you want to travel with anything else? Unless, again, this couldn't cut it when it comes to portability and battery life, which now it essentially kills or equals the competition. And again, on charge time, it kills the competition. So that is a really important point. Uh, the keyboard, 350 US dollars, but this is better than any keyboard in that price range and it works wirelessly. Uh, they've also actually improved the keyboard from previous generations. Key travel is better. It's definitely a pleasure to work on. Haptic trackpad. These are all things that people should be cognizant of when making this price, you know, the apples to apples comparison. 350 for this keyboard. Well, the keyboard for the Tab S9 Ultra is the same price. And for the iPad Pro, it's the same price. And both keyboards are pieces of junk compared to this one. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Another thing you should be aware of, the built-in kickstand. While that is just, you know, a basic feature that the Surface Pro has had since inception, it's inherently better than literally every other product that attempts to copy it or build it into the stand. You get my drift. So there's just no reason for us to screw, screw around, in my opinion, anymore with mobile OS-based tablets. And when you put this next to the Surface Pro 10 from last year, you wouldn't notice any real difference unless you started to try to do some heavy lifting again. And that is what makes the Snapdragon X Elite really so amazing here in the Surface Pro is that when we had the Pro X, you instantly could tell you were not running uh, an x86 chip. You know, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's not ready for prime time. Now, if someone handed this to me, I wouldn't know that I was running a Snapdragon processor. I would have no idea. I wouldn't know that everything was being emulated. I mean, native things aren't, but you see what I'm saying. The only way I would know is if I went to hook up an eGPU because here it won't work or if I tried to run a game because here it wouldn't run poorly, it would tell me the anti-cheat software isn't functional. Now Microsoft is working on all of that and I really believe by the end of this year or even the next generation, this is going to be close to a perfect product, but that's for people that are looking for flaws. So historically, Microsoft always tried to make this, you know, the tablet that could also be your laptop. And I believe it has finally been realized because over all of those generations, Microsoft was kind of you know, going in one direction or another to try to find that sweet spot. And it always was still a bit of a piecemeal, even if it was the best of its kind. Now it finally is a two-in-one legitimately, a tablet in every way, shape, and form that also, again, can finally replace uh, your Ultrabook or MacBook of choice. But, of course, if you know you need to do stuff that is beyond the capability of this chip, even though it is amazingly powerful, especially in native applications, that's why it does even beat Apple's silicon, that's when you know you need to wait for the Intel or AMD variant, which hopefully will come in time and not be too much less efficient, or just get a different solution altogether. But that's today's video. The Surface Pro 11 finally, in my opinion, is the tablet that it was always meant to be and ultimately can also replace your laptop, thin and light laptop of choice. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.